Well, hello. Today I want to talk about Saturn's entry into Pisces and what that is going to mean from an astrological perspective. So let's see if I can share my screen here. And I just need to get rid of a few panels so that I can see what's going on. And now we're ready. Saturn enters Pisces on March 7th of this year. But first, less than an hour before Saturn's ingress into Pisces, there will be a full moon with Mars squared Neptune right here, Mars conjunct natal Mars in the Sibley chart for America, and Chiron opposite natal Saturn. These aspects will become exact around mid-March, and they and Saturn's ingress into Pisces will probably be intensified by this full moon. Now, when Saturn is in Pisces, one's dreams can become reality. And Saturn is going to spend a little bit longer than usual in Pisces this time. It will be in Pisces for about three years. Now, some of the things that have happened in the past years when Saturn went into Pisces are Social Security was enacted in 1935. We had the Beatles and the British invasion and music in 1964. And the World Wide Web provided an elegant interface for the internet in 1994. Those are the web pages that you just go to and you click on what you want to see. Uh, before that, some of you may remember that prior to the World Wide Web, uh, if you were on the public internet, about all you could do was you could send emails, you could download files from servers, or you could upload files to servers. And that was about it. Uh, but the web pages, that gave us an elegant way to surf the internet. Now, when Saturn is in Pisces, we also expect some old structures to deteriorate and dissolve. And furthermore, it's going to be co-present with Neptune for the next three years. They'll be in Pisces together. And that is like having a three-year conjunction of Neptune. And all of that is going to culminate in February 2026, when Saturn and Neptune have a conjunction at zero plus degrees Aries. And I claim that both Russia and America will likely be affected quite a bit by Saturn's sojourn through Pisces. Now, the reason that Russia will be affected is because, as I said, with Saturn and Neptune being co-present in Pisces, that's like having those two planets conjunct for three years. And in the past, Saturn-Neptune conjunctions have had a significant impact on Russia. For example, in 1917, there is a conjunction followed by the Bolshevik Revolution. In 1952, the conjunction was followed by the death of Stalin and subsequent de-Stalinization of the Soviet Union. And in 1989, following the conjunction, we had the fall of the Berlin Wall and the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union. And I really like this last example because Saturn typically represents structure, Neptune dissolves structures, and we saw that structure of the Berlin Wall literally crumble and dissolve before our eyes. Now, for America, I use both a July 2nd, 1776 chart for the passage of the Resolution for Independence and the July 4th, 1776 chart <coughs> for when George Washington was informed of this decision. In each chart, Neptune is in Virgo, square Mars, and Gemini, and that's when you have transits of slow-moving planets uh, through Pisces, uh, it's going to set off this Neptune-Mars square, and that can inflame passions, bring about disinformation and violence in America. Thus, we'll face more challenges as both Saturn and Neptune move through Pisces over the next three years. Now, this position at zero plus degrees Aries, it's important in the history of the United States because the American Civil War began in 1861 right as Neptune left Pisces 
and entered Aries. And when it entered Aries, it was making an, an exact square to Venus uh, in the July 2nd, 70, 76 chart for the passage of the resolution for independence. And this square represents a clash of values. Okay. Now, there were other things going on, too, on the day that the American Civil War began. Uh, for example, transiting Uranus and Mars were conjunct natal Uranus. And that was the really explosive uh, part of those transits that day. Uh, we don't have that this time around, but we do have uh, Saturn squ squaring Venus. It probably won't be as severe but there may be some conflicts of some sort. Okay, now, several of the aspects that preceded the Civil War have been repeating some, themselves. For instance, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, transiting Neptune opposite natal Neptune, and transiting Neptune square natal Mars. Also, Uranus conjunct north node in Taurus. Now, this happened last... Uh, July 31st, August 1st of 2022. And if we think about what this would mean, well, Taurus is ruled by Venus. That can represent personal values. Uranus is uh, often rebellious. And the North Node just intensifies things. So combined, this could lead to an intensification of rebellion based upon personal values and one's belief system. Okay. Now, the last time Uranus and the North Node were conjunct in Taurus was in 1855. And at that point in history, Kansas was at the epicenter of American politics. Okay? What was going on with Kansas was they were just, they were about to become an official territory of the United States. And within just a few days of this conjunction, the citizens of Kansas were going to vote on whether to enter the Union as a slave territory or as a free territory. Well, Kansas is right next to Missouri, which was a slave state at the time. And so what happened was a lot of people crossed that border from Missouri into Kansas in order to vote illegally in that election. In history, they're known as border ruffians. As a result of those border ruffians, Kansas initially entered the Union as a slave territory. Later, when they became a state, they became a free state. Okay, now, go forward to uh, July 31st, August 1st of 2022. Kansas was once again at the epicenter of American politics. But this time, the issue was abortion. Uh, the conjunction that happened in 2022 was just a few days before Kansas was going to vote on whether to keep in their constitution uh, a portion that gave women the right to have control over their own bodies, uh, the right to choose an abortion if they wanted to. So this time around, uh, they chose to preserve that, to keep that in the constitution. So American our people in Kansas, women in Kansas, still have the right to control their own bodies. Nonetheless, things may come to a head in 2025 or 2026 for both Russia and America. Here's a graphic ephemeris. It shows that in the summer of 2025, Neptune and Saturn, they're both going to move into Aries briefly. And in July, they get very, very close to a conjunction, but then they retrograde back into Pisces. But in February of uh, 2026, they will both move into Aries again and finally come into conjunction. Okay, now personally, I think there's a 50-50 chance that Putin will be gone before the end of 2023 and that Russia may collapse by February 2026. America, on the other hand, America seems to be in better shape. It's currently trying to resolve threats to its democracy, but a lot of what happens may hinge upon who wins the presidential election in 2024. 
So uh, I believe that's going to be my last slide here. And sure enough, it is. So let me stop sharing the screen. And the bottom line here is that over the next three years, there will probably be some political upheavals in both Russia and in America. Uh, Russia is probably in real danger of collapsing again, either the government or the entire country. This year, uh, Putin faces a lot of adverse aspects from uh, Saturn, Chiron, and Uranus, and Russia's chart also experiences some adverse aspects from those planets. Uh, particularly Uranus will come into play in the second half of the year. Uranus always likes change. So we'll see if Putin can hold on to power or not. And we'll see if uh, Putin has some serious health problems or not. Nonetheless, over the next three years, I'm expecting that there will be a lot of turmoil in Russia and there's a very good chance that the whole thing may collapse. Once again, I think America's in better shape. Uh, but like I say, we got to wait and see who's going to win this next presidential election. Okay, well, that's it. So I'll see you later.